It's like, what time is it? It's like 12 o'clock. We have a ton of stuff to do today, including going on the beach and doing some slack lining and sleeping. What we do here is go back, 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 back. So today I want to talk a little bit about the vibes of moving, the vibes of running, the vibes of getting out, staying in different places, staying is contradictory, moving to different places, moving around and not staying in one place. What's it all about? How does it work? What's up? What's going on? The vibes of walking solo on the beach, that's what we're talking about. Okay, so I've been sitting literally right there trying to think about what the answer is. What it is about running, what it is about moving, what's, what's the reason? I couldn't think of it for the longest time and then it just dawned on me. And it's obvious because I've obviously I've thought about it a lot. And it's the freedom to do what I want, when I want, how I want. And it's not that I travel because I want to do what I want, when I want, how I want. It's that because I want to do what I want, when I want, how I want, I end up traveling because you see, there's an entire world out there and every possibility that exists, it's in this world, right? And every possibility that exists, it doesn't exist in the same spot. Where I was born in Howell, Michigan, every possibility doesn't exist there. Where I'll go to another place, every possibility doesn't exist there either. So let's say yesterday I wanted to go rock climbing, tomorrow I want to go surfing. Well, you can't exactly do the same two in the same place. So doing what I want, when I want, how I want, that leads to traveling because you'll move in order to be able to do what you want in this moment now. And it's not just sports related either. It's not just surfing, climbing, speed flying, whatever. It's so whatever you want to do in life. If it's possible, it's possible in this world. And if it's not possible in the spot where you're at, then you need to move to that spot to do it. That leads to travel. isn't what I do or why I do it. For me it is, but for other people it's how I do it. So I'm gonna tell you that now. So that's how I do it. I just go around the world from carnival to carnival getting free beers and reselling them to all the other adults. <laughs> Alright, maybe that's not how I do it. 
there's a little, there's a story behind this. In order to tell a story, we're gonna have to go back to 2013. We're gonna have to go back to like 2014. I had about a year and a half into college. I was going to college in Chicago. I was going to University of Loyola. I was going to college to be a doctor because that's what smart people do. And I was doing great at it. Had a 3.9. I was going to class, maybe, I wasn't really going to class. And I wasn't going to class not because I'm antisocial. It's just that I found I could learn more outside of class by reading books quickly in a smaller amount of time than I could by actually going to class. That's not to say I wouldn't go to class if professors weren't interesting, etc. It just made more sense for me to study outside of school. When I was younger, my father passed away. And when he passed away, he left me with a little bit of money, just enough to not complete college, but just enough to almost complete college. In my free time, I would take this money, I would day trade. Sometimes I would make $3,000 in a day, sometimes I would lose $2,000. The days when I made $3,000, those days were great. We'd go out, we'd buy crazy stuff, we would, we would go explosive. The days I would lose $2,000, I would cry. I wouldn't literally cry, but anyways, they just weren't as so good. So I wasn't going to class that much. I was in my free time day trading and staying inside of my dorm rooms. And that's when I started skydiving. Skydiving changed my life. I was taking my motorcycle from University of Loyola to Rochelle, which was a small drop zone for skydiving about an hour away. I would go there whenever I got the chance. Always. I wanted. To, I don't like being locked up in a little area studying. I don't like being enclosed. I like being open. I like being out in the wild. I like exploring. I like seeing things. I didn't dig it. I was good at it. I was good at school, but I didn't dig it. So that's when I called my parents. Not that I had to call my parents, but I did call my parents and let my mom know I was dropping out of school to move to Eloy, Arizona to go be a skydiver. At this point, I thought I was gonna train, become an instructor, etc. in skydiving. I packed up all my things, drove down in my little Jeep Wrangler to Eloy, Arizona. I got to Arizona, I skydived for maybe like three months, and my buddy John was in Costa Rica. John says, come on down. I say, it's gonna be expensive. You see, I had this little chunk of money, but I didn't want it to go away. So I looked at prices for airline tickets. I found a ticket from Florida for $40. The problem was I wasn't in Florida. Then I found a ticket from Arizona to Chicago, to South Carolina, to Florida, down from Florida, down to Costa Rica for about $200 in total. I did some skydiving in Florida before going down to Costa Rica. I traveled through Central America for about four months with about eight grand. That seems like, I don't know if that seems like a lot or if that seems like a little to you guys, but for me, that ended up being a decent amount of money. It was too much money. So I'm still living off of this little bit of chunk of money that was I was left by my father. I fly back to the United States. I decided I wanted to move to Colorado. I moved to Colorado because I found out while I was in Arizona this really cool thing called speed flying. It's basically where you take a little tiny parachute, you climb a mountain, and you fly off. It's basically free once you've bought your parachute. We call them wings. You see, that's the trick. That's the trick to the, all this. It's eliminating costs. It's not spending money on this big yacht or this big house or this big car when you could be spending on other things you want to do. You see, you don't need to take these essential things that aren't essential in life. You don't need to buy these things that you don't need. These things that you think you need, that society tells you you need, you don't need them. I moved to Colorado where I teach myself how to program in Java. Yes, I know how to program in Java. The thing is, is it wasn't for me. I was in front of a computer for long hours a day, which I did not dig at all. I did, however, teach myself how to speed fly. I taught myself how to throw myself off of these mountains with a tiny parachute. This is where John comes in again. I go back to Michigan, John's in Europe. I wanna go meet him out in Europe. But the problem is money. See, this is the problem with everything. Everyone thinks it's really expensive to move around. Everyone thinks it's really expensive to do the things they want to do. I found a ticket from New York for $130 to Amsterdam. Once I get there, I end up staying in hostels for about $7, $8 a night. I end up eating food for maybe $2 to $5 a day. 
The overall is about $5,000 in eight months. This is a complete game changer to me. I love moving around. I love being outdoors. I love to do things, but things cost money. When I found out I could live eight months off of $5,000, I figured, what are people doing out there? Why are they spending so much money? And that completely changed everything. So I came back to the United States. At this point, I basically had run out of all the money I was left by my father after he passed away. I come back to the United States. I work concrete for a little while. And that leads us to the trip that we're on right now. Right now, I'm in Mexico. I'm in Puerto Escondido. I, today, have spent about $8. I've gotten a hotel. I've gotten a place to sleep. And I've practiced slacklining all day, which is one thing that I've really, really, really been enjoying lately. How much did it cost to get down here? It cost about... For us, it was about $130. Once I'm down here, the, host the hotel for the night is 100 pesos. That equals about $5. It's split between two people. That equals about $2.50 per person. We each buy dinner for about $2 to $1.50 per night. It's super, super cheap, and we get to do the things we want to do. So the point is, the thing I want you to get out of this is that you don't need a yacht, you don't need a big car, you don't need a big house. You just wanna do the things that you wanna do. What are the things that you want to do? The things for me, that's to be outdoors, that's to go speed flying, that's to go, I've recently, I like rock climbing, I like slack climbing apparently, didn't know that. I like playing ukulele, I, I like doing things with my body, that's the coolest thing to me. And to travel, to move around, if I have to do that to do those things, it doesn't suck. I like traveling too, I found out. I hope that makes a little sense to you how I'm doing these things. I hope you understand that right now at this moment in my life, I'm not some rich, insanely crazy, wealthy guy that I'm just doing what it takes to make ends meet. Sometimes I'm sleeping on beaches and you know what? I like sleeping on beaches. It's awesome. I went in Greece, for example, I was sleeping on a beach and I'd wake up every morning. I'd go flying off of the cliff behind me and land next to my tent. These things are super cool to me and they're super cheap. The same amount of money I could take to spend in a hotel in Las Vegas for a night, I could take to live on that beach for two months. It's unreal to me. So it depends on what you wanna do and how you wanna spend your money on how long you can live without working jobs that you don't wanna work.